My wife's best friend has an autistic child named Lewis. Lewis is 12 years old. He's the sweetest child I have ever known. I've known him since he was six. And uh, we were at their house Labor Day, and Lewis informed me that he was going to run the 40 yard dash for the Special Olympics at Gwinnett High School near where I live in Atlanta. And he asked me if I'd come hoot for him. And I said, Lewis, I'd love to come hoot for you. I just need to check my schedule. And he goes, We checked it. You're clear. <laughs> well, then I'm your man, Lewis. And I got to admit, I was dreading it, and then I ended up having fun. I thought it was going to be sad. That's why I was dreading it. It's a celebration is what it is. People are tailgating. They're not painting their faces and bellies blue, but they're cooking sausages, getting hammered, betting on these races. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. They are betting on these races. And it's not easy to handicap a race. You got 17 special needs kids in six lanes. You don't know what the fuck's going to happen <laughs> when they fire that starting pistol. They could scatter, <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. We saw it all that day. They're not drug testing these kids. <laughs> and they announced a 40-yard dash, and I was making a little wager on my man Lewis, which I did for 100 bucks. And, and I was looking down at the track. I'm up in the stands, and I was trying to figure out which one's Lewis, which isn't easy because they all wear the exact same thing. They wear Special Olympics t-shirts, Special Olympics shorts which they got that day. But you can wear uh, whatever footwear you want. And Lewis, for whatever reason, had chosen yellow rubber boots. <laughs> which didn't make sense at first, and then it started raining. <laughs> Fuck, if this thing goes off-road... <laughs> I got a natural mutter. And Lewis won. The yellow blur. That's what I call him now, the yellow blur. His mother, he loves that nickname. His mother called me the other day. She goes, would you please call Lewis the yellow blur? Put him on the phone. You're the yellow blur. Bing. It's not like professional sports. You go to a Lakers game, you wave at Kobe Bryant until your arm falls off. He won't wave back to you. Lewis wave back to you in the middle of a fucking race. He doesn't give a shit. Lewis is fan friendly. <laughs> Lewis will stop signing an autograph. The yellow blur. <laughs> so I took my son Tater Tot to uh, Europe this summer. <laughs> My son uh, is 21 years old now. He's in college, getting his master's in entertainment business. Uh, he's a great kid, man. He's, uh, I'm so proud of him. He's smart. He's funny. He has my brain's high-end peaks without my low-end problems. <laughs> That's some good goddamn news for daddy right there. We've been monitoring it. He's funny. I was doing a corporate gig in Orlando where he goes to college, and I was backstage with him. And I don't get asked to do a ton of corporate gigs, because what do you want your corporate image to be? <laughs> we were hoping for an overweight alcoholic that smokes and cusses. <laughs> Let's call Lewis, see if Ron's free. Anyway, I'm backstage in the green room with my son, and I wear wild socks. And because I do, people give me bizarre socks for whatever reason. And uh, I'm backstage with my son, and I'm putting on these weird socks. And, and Marshall goes, uh, Dad, uh, those socks are gay. I said, chicks dig these socks. He goes, chicks wear those socks. All right, he's my kid, you can stop those tests. <laughs> I love his mom, man, his, his mom's great. She's my second wife, and uh, I never argued with her ever. She didn't want to be married to somebody that was always going to be on the road. And the only argument I ever remember having with her was when he was a toddler about whether or not we should spank him, and her contention was that if you had an argument with an adult and you disagreed with him, you certainly wouldn't hit him. I said, I would if they peed my face. <laughs> I'm not kidding, be in my face. See what the fuck happened. <laughs> she 
she busted him with internet porn when he was 15, and I felt so sorry for him. She called me just squawking. Burr, 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 burr. And I felt horrible for the kid, because when I was 15, I was so horny, I could jack off to the Sears catalog. <laughs> and that's just big girl panties and lawnmowers. <laughs> I can't imagine being 15 years old and having an unstoppable stream of pornography piped straight into your goddamn bedroom. When I was a kid, I had to earn porn, man. You had to wait till your friend's dad went out of town on business. You had to pull down a rickety spring-loaded attic ladder. You had to crawl up into a dusty spider-ridden fucking crawl space, forge through cardboard boxes till you find an eight millimeter reel. Then what? Learn how to work a fucking projector. That's what. <laughs> and after all that, you got silent, bushy porn. And if there was a soundtrack, it was always so fucked up you couldn't understand it. He's gonna stick his finger in her ear? No, his penis in her rear. Watch the movie. We had one friend that was two years younger than us and he went, she put it in her mouth. I didn't know she was gonna put it in her mouth. <laughs> she gonna need to brush her teeth. <laughs> Not yet, but she will. Watch the film. <laughs> Note to self, put it in her mouth. So Lori told me, she goes, that's my ex-wife's name is, she goes, you're gonna need to talk to your son about sex, it's time. And I said, well, you're right, it is. And she goes, when are you gonna do it, Ron? I said, he's gonna be at the house this weekend, so I'll talk to him then. And uh, I said, okay, fine. I said, oh, Marsha, turn off television. I said, turn it off, I need to talk to you. All right. I said, I wanna talk to you about sex. He goes, oh, dad, come on. I said, nope, you're 15 years old. It's time we had this talk. And he goes, okay. I said, the clitoris is as sensitive as an eyeball. Is that it? That's all I got. <laughs> Don't go rubbing on it if it's dry. Turn that TV back on, boy. <laughs> what about safe sex, Dad? Yeah, it's never safe. Their husbands always come home. That's a fucking myth. <laughs> He's so smart, man. I just can't believe how smart kids are today. He can answer any question that you can come up with in two seconds off his phone. He's a computer freak anyway, but you ask any question, doesn't matter world geography, world history, a note and a song written 300 years ago, click, click, there it is. When I was a kid, I had to believe my mother. That's it, that's all I had. I like, Mommy, where do rainbows come from? Well, 3,000 years ago, an 800-year-old man named Noah was commissioned by the Lord to build a giant ship and all the animals, two by two. You try to run that crap by a kid today, they're like, click, click, bullshit. <laughs> click, click, porn. <laughs> People fucking on my phone. If my mother didn't know the answer to a question, I had to go to the library, which is a building <laughs> where they used to store the knowledge. <laughs> now it's just a place where homeless people piss. <laughs> but my mother used to drop me off at the library when I was a kid, and I was always so intimidated by it because it was so big, and you had to be quiet because the knowledge is sleeping. And <laughs> You had to learn a decimal system made up by some fuck named Dewey. 
Then you had to peruse a 100,000 square foot building with volumes of knowledge from floor to ceiling, ceiling to floor. You had to cross-reference Dewey's bullshit with the author's name and the card catalog. And you finally get to the place where the knowledge that you seek is supposed to be, and it might not fucking be there. Where's the knowledge that I seek? Yeah, somebody else has got it. When are they going to bring it back? They keep it for a month for a nickel. <laughs> How am I supposed to learn what I need to know? You ask your mother. <laughs> My mother doesn't know how to work a projector. <laughs> She's in dental school, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Don't try to do the math on that bit. It'll just fuck you up. <laughs> The guy actually stopped my show a few weeks ago, and he goes, well, now, wait a minute. Now, if, if this summer you were back in Las Vegas, and that's when you broke your tooth, and that's when your mother went to dental school, and now you're seven years old, you're saying your mother's already in dental. I'm like, what, dude, really? You had no problem with Pearl jumping on my stomach and saying she could have all my babies at the same time. But the math on this one joke has got you so fucked up, you just have to talk. Yeah.